Hello everyone, this is a pre-lab for Systematics Laboratory Exercise 9 which is all about genes as sources of data. Particularly, we're going to focus on features of GenBank. So, in the past exercises, we focused on obvious observable features on organisms which are morphological features. However, here, what other information can be utilized for, as a source of data in phylogenetic studies. In addition to morphological data, you can also utilize RNA, DNA, and protein information. So how do you extract these information in a biological organism? It's through molecular methods. So um, Highlighted here is a general framework on how these information are extracted from DNA extraction to phylogenetic analysis. So first, you have to have your target organism. You have to have the organism with, with you. A sample tissue, for instance, for animal, for both animal and plant, a portion of the leaf for plants, and you do DNA extraction. DNA extraction, the goal is to extract the genomic DNA of the organism. Afterwards, you're going to um, target a specific region, PCR amplification. You can do whole genomic amplification. However, targeting the whole genome usually is expensive. We do uh, a gene or a region-specific amplification and then um, after the amplification process, you're going to confirm if there is a positive result from the amplification process, of course. So when you have confirmed that there is a positive result, you do DNA purification to purify what you have amplified and then DNA sequencing. So molecular databases. So, um, why is it important that we have a global repository of molecular data? When you publish an information or a phylogenetic analysis that involves molecular data, you have to submit your sequences in a global repository. Why? Why is it important that you do that? To make sure that the information you have is true for other researchers to confirm and also for further studies for them to utilize the information that you have published to further science so that's why it is very important to have a global repository and everyone around the globe global can uh, can have access or may have access to the information you have so um there are two different kinds of repository, major sequence repository and data, spe data specific repository. Major sequence repository um, holds large amount of data or large numbers of data. Data specific repositories, on the other hand, holds data for specific organisms. Organisms that are usually utilized in genetic studies, Drosophila, have the E. coli, and um, there are also databases that only holds protein or RNA sequences. So, again, we are going to discuss features of GenBank, which is managed by NCBI, or the National Council for Biotechnology Information. Why do we focus on this part? particular database because it is the largest repository of information that we have all across taxa different kinds of molecular data are um, deposited in Zenbank so um, it also have a specific feature that is very useful for researchers the basic local alignment search tool or we call it BLAS. so so first go to ncbi.gov it will lead you to the search bar or in you can search different information different you can filter different data 
for your research. So, gene, genome, even publications are available here. Assembly, by collection, biosamples, nucleotide. So, we're going to focus on nucleotide searches as well as the BLAST feature. So, for nucleotide searches, for instance, I would like to know if there is a sequence of Pandanus amarillifolius. So, this is commonly called Pandanubango in the Philippines, utilized for the Pandan desserts, Pandan flavored desserts that we have. So, I'm interested in searching for what particular nucleotide information is available for pandanus amarillifolius so hitting search just wait be patient so so this is our search result for pandanus amarillifolius so so based on our search for pandanus amarillifolius you will see the interface what particular information is given by this interface so items here focus how many number of gene sequences are available in GenBank for Pandanus amarillifolius? So we have here 52, a total of 52. So you have here the species name or the taxon name, the target region, accession number, and how many base pairs are there for this particular deposited sequence so if we click on one deposited uh, data here it will show you the organisms classification the reference so who did or or who did deposited this information and then if there is a journal reference for this particular data it will show you the journal title so if you're interested in downloading this information you can just click on FASTA it will give you the FASTA file available for the deposited data for Pandanus amarillifolius which is an RNA sequence partial CDS. You can just copy paste it in your Notepad++ if you're in Windows and um, Text Wrangler if you're utilizing Mac OS. So that's for searches wherein you type in the taxonomic name you can also search um, a specific genbank accession so for instance you have this journal assigned to you okay you have this journal assigned to you and it gives you this accession numbers you want to have the sequence of this particular or you want to search the FASTA file for this particular accession number go to your search bar type in the accession details hit search and it will lead you to that particular to the, to the information on that accession number so this is a Publish study. The authors, you will see who did those studies. And then again, if you're only interested in if you're interested in downloading the FASTA file, you click here FASTA and then you just copy paste this in your notepad plus plus or in your text wrangler. So we have the information for this. This is a bad coronavirus to complete genomes. Aside from doing nucleotide searches in lesson 9, you also have to do last 
searches so basic again basic local alignment search tool for instance so I want to do nucleotide pass for instance you are given this unknown sequence by your professor you want to know what is the identity of this particular it's quite long So, for instance, you have this particular um, unknown sequence given to you by your teacher. And the task is for you to search what particular organism, to what particular organism, what particular region this sequence belongs to. So, let's try blast search on the nucleotide sequences given to you so you just paste your sequences here the entirety of your sequence in the query box and then hit blast you have to wait you're searching their database it is uh, the program is searching its database for information Okay, so okay, here is the result of our blast search for that particular unknown sequence. So let's see. Hit on description, so that's the default. You have here a please take note of the percent identity, it gives you an information on how identical your sequence is or the search sequence is to the. Um, data that is being presented here or to the hits in their database so it's a hundred percent hit a hundred percent identical to SARS viruses so SARS viruses different isolates of SARS viruses and you have here information on what particular genetic data type it is a sequence coming from complete genome of the SARS virus. These are the different accessions that has that 100% identity, which we call, or indi as indicated in your manual, the in-group, and the curry cover. That is a percentage of curry sequence of your specimen that overlaps the sequence or the reference sequence if you hit on taxonomy it will show you on the 100 sequence that were selected to be the highest to be identical to the sequence that you have searched the hit is that it is a severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 so it's a virus here for its blast name and the number of hits is 100 34 so it is the alignment of what you have searched a graphic representation of the distribution on the blast hits of the sequences so so that is blast searching so that is how you conduct a blast search specifically that feature will be very helpful for you in downloading when you download um, that is blast searching so specifically for the journals assigned to you in the laboratory you may opt so specifically for the journals assigned to you in the laboratory the features it would be very useful for you is the nucleotide search when you um, do alignment and you have, have to download the accession numbers that are um, stated in the journals that are assigned to you. So let's go back to the pre lab. So, aside from NCBI Zenbank, we also have the NBL or the European Molecular Biology Laboratory. It, they are also major molecular data repository 
they focus on DNA and RNA sequences. Structural biology would focus on tissues and organs in relation to health and diseases. So they are all more on associated with the medical field. However, I try to submit sequences here for biodiversity studies, particularly plant DNA, and they did accepted it. So they are not only limited to information in the medical field, but they prioritize it. Another major repository would be Bioinformatics and DNA Data Bank of Japan, which focuses on DNA sequences. Uh, it's usually of Japanese research studies, but shares data with NCBI and EMBM. So these are the other genomic databases, mutation databases, protein databases, RNA sequences. These are um, data-specific repositories. So these are the commonly utilized softwares in phylogenetic analysis. So first we have here CView. CView is a very helpful tool in phylogenetic analysis in terms of the alignment process. Um, Notepad++, you should download Notepad++ if you have Windows. However, an alternative for Mac users would be Text Wrangler. Text Wrangler, right? Text Wrangler. So, Text Wrangler is right here. Aside from that, uh, Fig3, if you already have your phylogenetic results, trees, viewing trees, editing of trees for aesthetic purposes and for it to be um, pleasing for the readers, pleasing for your explanation, um, you should download Fig3. Um, mega right here the reason why we focused our succeeding chapters in this software you can either download mega 7 or mega 10 is because um, it's like a five in one software it has everything you can do alignment in mega you can do phylogenetic analysis in mega you can do model testing in mega you can also have or you can also edit your trees in mega you can also view and edit your trees in mega PAOP here is for phylogenetic analysis utilizing persimony persimony analysis Phylip is also a, a tree viewing editing software Miskit right here is very useful when you want to export your data for different softwares or for it to be analyzed by different softwares. So phylogenetic softwares makes our life more easier. So it conducts analysis using algorithms that enables the researcher to assemble and align molecular data analyze and create phylogenetic trees, and also edit and present the data, make it more aesthetically pleasing. So it is most often um, open and free. You just have to download it on their website. And um, it's usually that they have a window counterpart, they have, they have Windows counterpart, they have a Mac counterpart of a particular software.